how does every good story start? Oh, yes. Once upon a time, there was a little four-year-old girl whose mother died of cancer. And that little girl was me. Now, thankfully, I do not have this extreme sob story, you know, where my mother dies at four and I have this abusive, alcoholic, horrible father. The opposite is true. I had the most amazing dad ever. And when my mother died, when I was four, and my sister who's here tonight was two, a lot of the family members and friends said, David, you need to give those girls up for adoption because there is no way that a man can raise two girls on his own. Now, this was the 1970s. Things are a little different now. And my father, in words that I cannot use in public, basically told them that they were either going to help him or they were going to take a flying leap because he was raising his girls. And maybe if I get to come back another time, Jeff, I'll share with you the story of Captain Patience and his sidekick gullible girl, AKA me and my dad. And I tried Captain Patience on a regular basis, including the time that we ran out of dishwashing powder for the uh, dishwasher, and I dumped half a bottle of liquid dishwashing soap. You can imagine what came out of that dishwasher. Or maybe I'll share with you the time that a cat got into our house. And my sister and I were desperate to get this thing out before our father came home. And I came up with the brilliant idea to stink it out with garlic powder. But I digress. I'll share those stories another day. Now, as amazing as my dad was, he wasn't a mom. And my seven-year-old little heart wanted a mother. And in grade two, I had an opportunity to have a female teacher. And she was beautiful, and she was smart, and she was everything I wanted to be. And to me, that first day of grade two, she became my mom. And I'd go home at night, and I would dream in my bed of how my dad was going to marry her and how she was going to come live with us. And she would take care of me, and she would be my mom. And I wouldn't feel so different anymore because my sister and I were the only kids without a mom. And grade two was an important year because I always had this incredibly vivid imagination. And in grade two, I could finally write down all the stories that had been going through my head, which seemed like forever. And I remember the first time I wrote it out and I brought it into my teacher and I handed it to her. And she looked at it and she told me how good it was. Well, that's all this seven-year-old little heart needed. Every day I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And every day I was handing her more and more and more and more pages for her to tell me how good I was because I needed that feminine affirmation. I needed someone to tell me that I had value and worth as a little girl. And unfortunately, I emotionally overwhelmed my poor teacher. And I'm pretty sure back in the late 60s, early 70s, you know, they didn't have a course in teacher's college about how to deal with emotional needly, emotionally needy, grieving seven-year-old girls. Pretty sure that's not on the course selection. And so the day came, and she said the words that changed my life. You are not a good, a good writer, please stop writing. And with those words, my little heart was crushed. And I did not write again for a long time. Now, that's not 100% true. I mean, I graduated 
high school with honors in English. So obviously I wrote something, but I never wrote the words that were sitting in my heart. They just kind of stayed there. And anybody, so, anytime somebody would tell me to write something, those words, I'm not a good writer, please don't write, they would just go through me. And so life went on and I grew up, I got married, I had kids, became an entrepreneur, and life was okay. And I was doing okay as an entrepreneur. But you know, sometimes crossroads come in your life and they're put there to help you make a change in your life. And so I hit a crossroads. I had an opportunity to get a website. This is 2011. Okay, now even back then, you could kind of do a website on your own, but it was not easy, not like today. And I had an opportunity for my mentor and my teacher was willing to set me up a website and I was so excited because I wanted to be able to just share with people. And I didn't really think this through what it meant having a website. And I remember he sent me an email. He says, your website's set up and so is your blog. And I email him back, what's a blog? I had no clue. And then he wrote the words that was going to put me at a crossroads. He wrote back, he says, well, you write and you teach people things. Well, you know the words that were going through my head. You're not a good writer. You should not write. And I sat there and I looked at that email and I thought, that's it, I'm done. I'm not going to do it. But sometimes there's a small, still voice that speaks to your heart. And that still, small voice said to me, Kim, you're not that seven-year-old little girl anymore. It's time for you to write. And I thought it through, and I argued with myself, and I fought with myself, and that small, voice just kept getting stronger. Kim, you're not that seven-year-old girl. It's time for you to write. And so with much fear and trembling and three days of, I don't know how many crumpled paper, I feel like I felt filled up my bed, uh, my office with crumpled paper. I had a one-page blog post and I put it on my site and I asked a few people to listen to it, or not listen to it, to read it. And they really enjoyed it. And I'm like, wow. Like, maybe, maybe I can write. You know, maybe I won't be the greatest writer, but obviously something I wrote had an impact. So I thought, okay, I'll write more blog posts. And then the day came when I realized that I needed to write books. That was a scary day. See, I had overcome some of the fear, but that day I knew more had to happen. I had to finally release those words. And so I did a lot of soul searching and I did a lot of thinking back to that time when I was seven years old. And I realized that I had a part to play in her saying those words because you don't know how emotionally needy I was. Every day I was on that woman because to me she was my mother. And so I made a decision. I chose to let those words go and I forgave her. And about a year later, after coming a hair's breadth about, about three or four times of actually not writing the book, my first book was published. Within the next year, another two to three were published, and I just kept publishing books. And then in 2015, something really horrible and wonderful happened at the same time. My son was getting married, so that was the really good part. But the bad part was, is we had to replace two vehicles, not wanted to, not needed to, absolutely had to. We were driving by faith. And so my career began as I started to write books for other people. And that's how RTI Publishing was born. And I wanna say in conclusion, that what changed my life was letting go of the words of the past and not letting them affect me anymore. 
Every one of us has words that have been spoken over us. And it's your choice. Do you continue to hold on to them or do you choose to let them go? I chose to let them go and I'm so glad that I did because since then I've written over 100 books for myself and my clients. I get to be on stages. I get to share my story and all because I chose to let words set me free. So words have power. Let them empower you.